So we are at La Rue Creek Inn and Vineyard on a beautiful spring day. Everything is getting green and glorious. The apricot trees are blooming, the peach, the apple, the plum and the pear. Everything is great so far. So we're going to do a paella. Uh, I'm going to give you a recipe for a paella today. The paella is, tra is a tradition from Spain, of course and uh, cook over an open fire usually. So that's a little bit why we are outside and also the reason, one of the reasons we are cooking the paella is that this summer <clears throat> we are, uh, on Tuesday night, we'll have a paella every Tuesday night where uh, the local and the tourists can come and uh, enjoy the paella under the tent or close to the vineyard. We are going to talk about the ingredient in the paella and uh, of course the, the paella is a typical dish from uh, the region of Spain and every region of the recipe. So in you know close to the ocean like Vigo um, there will be a lot of seafood in the paella. Uh, more inside in Madrid or Seville will be more like the pork or um, the chicken. Uh, and the famous uh, sausage. Uh, uh, we, today we're going to use uh, chorizo sausage, which has a little bite to it. The important thing in the paella is the rice. You, of course, can use any rice that you want. I mean, but the shape of the rice in Spain doesn't look like the long grain. It's a little flat, and it's called bomba. Bomba is the rice, the preferred rice for the paella, but there's also, and you can order that online, uh, paella rice, which is, um, uh, you can feel it, it's a little bit of a flat rice, and um, the way we cook it, it just makes a difference, you know, but I have used other rices, and um, it, it'll work too, but this is the preferred. The, one of the crucial ingredients is the saffron, and uh, the saffron, of course, very expensive little guy. I mean, uh, this is beautiful from Spain. We're going to use a little bit of that. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, smoked paprika. So you, we, here we have two. We have the paprika picant so, and the paprika dolce. So we're going to use both. And we're going to see how... Um, I'm putting a little bit of a French touch, touch with the Herb de Provence. Um, these are the, the small ingredients, uh, salt and pepper, of course. A, um, we have a, uh, a diced tomato. This diced tomato, we had a little bit of pimento in it, but it's mild. The peas are probably in every paella, the, the Spanish. Also, they put uh, eggplant, not eggplant, uh, yeah, maybe eggplant, but also zucchini. Um, the uh, pork is... Uh, so that's different in places they put lamb or even beef. So, but pork, I uh, use pork to add a little bit more of uh, fat to the, to it. And you'll see when we cook, that makes a difference. The, um, the peppers, of course, any color you want, but green and, uh, and red it goes well with the paella. Um, chorizo and the artichoke art. These are artichoke art. I couldn't find the uh, bottom. I, I prefer to use the bottom of the artichoke, and that you can find it in a, in any shop. So, and uh, the onion, of course, and the garlic. Um, so I'm going to work on this, and uh, we'll start cooking. Really hot pan. Um, you got to see the smoke, and. Uh, you know, everything's gonna, I just want to give it a nice roast and uh, also that's gonna help our starter with the, with the sofrito, which is the, um, uh, which is the basic of uh, the paella when you start. Uh, so, all along you dish, you can, you know, put the more ingredient, a little pepper here. I like this dark ground pepper, nice, nice salt. Mm, this salt is from Washington.
Okay, things are going like the, the paella is a, uh, usually a dish that people cook over a uh, open fire outside. And I've done that at the inn where we have built a, a stone fire and I have one over there. Uh, and we have cooked paella on those gas and we have cooked paella on the open fire which was a lot of fun for like 30 or 40 people and um, the important thing with paella is to use the proper dish this is a paella dish um, the um, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit now I want to cook it I'm gonna show you a and you know on those dishes I've used already this is a bigger one than this one that I used in the summer and, uh, and I also had one made especially for me and uh, it's a little bit the, the pan the side is not uh, in an angle but it works well for me it's very heavy thick at the bottom okay so I'm good with the meat a little more smell very good already and, and you can smell the charcoal and the smoke it's all about smoke a little bit because uh, we're gonna add like uh, paprika smoked paprika to it the saffron has this little smoke flavor and of course the socorata that is at the end you almost burn the pan and uh, you'll see that so we're gonna put that aside and we're gonna put the onion uh, and uh, start the sofrito. So as you see, I, I add some garlic uh, to it. Uh, I don't want to over cook the garlic. Uh, everything is really smelling good now and uh, getting like kind of a, uh, uh, you know, this uh, glazing, uh, caramelized a little bit. Of, uh, and that's when you see that uh, it's ready, you know. And also by the smell, I mean, you can really tell. So I'm gonna add the uh, tomatoes. And uh, okay, uh, so we're gonna cook that a little more. So you know, the paella is a dish. That, uh, I think people stay away from it because you know reading the recipes or uh, seeing all these ingredients that intimidate a few people uh, but actually it's uh, if you follow and if you pay attention to like the heat and the timing you're going to succeed you know and if you use the proper rice of course but uh, don't be afraid to use some heat like I'm doing now because that's that's really, you know, when they do it on an open fire, you know, on the beach, in, you know, it, it's beautiful. I mean, in Lisbon, I've been there, that uh, we had this uh, paella outside with the flamenco dancers. Oh, beautiful. So, here we go. We are going to continue with, uh, uh, you know, there's a controversy here with peppers. Some people put peppers at the end and keep it crunchy. I'm gonna do in between here. I'm gonna put some that's gonna give a taste to the paella now. And uh, we are what we call doing the sofrito right now. This is the base of the paella. And uh, so that, all, you know, everything is soaking in and uh, really, uh, taking all the flavors so when I've got something like this where it's uh, going I like the temperature you see those little bubbles it's not going like no smoke it's going pretty well a little smoke but small steam so at this point I'm gonna add the flavor so we had some uh, salt and pepper in the, in the meat but here it's salt little pepper because if I put uh, the paprika piquant that's gonna give a little zinc to our uh, so it's a smoked paprika which smell oh divine it's amazing and 
So I'm a little careful with this guy because that might bring a little too much zinc to the to the rest of the dish. So and um, this one is mostly smoke, but it's beautiful. So like adding some smoke to it. I'm gonna wait a little bit for the for the saffron. I'm gonna let it soak again and uh, really take all the flavors. So we had uh, the some uh, the rest of the uh, uh, vegetable here. The, I like the artichoke. Like I said earlier, I like to use the uh, the firmier, the what we call the bottom of the artichoke and uh, artichoke bottom, and that's that cut in quarters is very nice and different. We're gonna put the saffron now. And usually, also people what they uh, do is. Uh, um, put the saffron in the uh, I gotta be a little careful here that the wind doesn't take my saffron away so I'm gonna put probably half a gram here that is <laughs> makes an expensive dish and again if you don't if you can find saffron some people use turmeric Turmeric, uh, it's a cheaper way to do it. Uh, saffron is a different taste, but turmeric could be good with it too. And um, so we have the paprika, and uh, now we're gonna add the, the rice. <laughs> so I just added uh, uh, the chicken and the pork. I'm gonna hold on to the uh, chorizo that we already cooked and uh, sear very well. We hold on the peas because they're frozen and I didn't find any fresh one uh, this time of the year. So I'm going to put a little bit of a uh, rosé in it just to get a little bit of a uh, juice. And then we're going to add two cups of the bomba rice. And you can tell how, you know, flat and nice. You can see that little eye in the middle. And we're going to try to cook it al dente. So here we go. Two cups. And... Uh, this is the only time we're going to really mix the rice with everything. After that, we're going to just let it go. So, right now, we want the rice to absorb all the flavors, all the aromas that we put in, the saffron, the pimento, the paprika, smoke. And I can, even if we're outside, there's a little wind, I can smell it now. It's just beautiful. I mean, and... Uh, See, you always you're a little bit on the edge with paella. You you want to you don't want to simmer it or medium. You want to keep going with it. It's like a um, uh, you know, and you'll see at the end we even go harder on it to produce the sucorata. And uh, but right now we have a nice mixture. The rice has absorbed uh, the oil, the uh, fat of the meat, and uh, we're gonna add the. Uh, we're gonna have to add the uh, stock right now. Smell very good. I might add a little bit of paprika. I can can use a little more smoke in it. So we have uh, two cup of rice, and we're gonna add four cup of uh, chicken broth. Actually. I'm going to do three cups of chicken broth and one cup of rosé. And we're going to add a little bit of vinegar too. So that's a nice organic chicken broth. I mean, I, I make my own, but uh, this is a very nice chicken broth that we can buy, you can buy as a... Uh, so here you want really the everything to be absorbed now and uh, you get this smoke and the uh, almost burn but not burn you know it's all wonderful now so I'm gonna add another cup of the and I'm gonna leave it alone we're gonna add 
we're gonna cook it for about five minutes eight minutes and uh, we're gonna add the rest of the ingredient and finish it so um, we're gonna so we have three cup of uh, of the organic uh, chicken broth and uh, a cup of the rosé so that will make four cup for the liquid and I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit and this is probably the last time that I'm mixing things up here okay so now we are having a great uh, temperature everything is cooking nicely and uh, we're gonna just keep it uncovered where everything simmer and uh, and the rice is absorbing all the flavors all right at this point I'm uh, I, I'm a fan of vinegar and uh, I'm gonna just put a this nice rice vinegar I, I don't use too aggressive you know uh, just like a few tablespoons it's just with the rice it's just wonderful so then we're gonna add the peas the sausage uh, that was pre-cooked and uh, the seafood so kind of arrange everything around like this I'm generous on the seafood. I'm not going to use no. This is a this seafood here is great because you can find it in package, and um, uh, you know of course you can use mussels that are. And then uh, on the um, shrimp, I like to put them uh, with the shell. Uh, that add flavor to the dish too. So, you know, we're going to kind of uh, soak them in like this. And actually, I'm going to move it a little bit inside. The rice is really getting, see the saffron, the color, I mean, and the... I think I'm going to have a little bit of liquid. I'm going to taste the rice. I want it like a pasta al dente but uh, and then uh, so everything else is cooking now but you don't have this here um, so I, uh, earlier I told you about the the peppers so I like to cook the pepper almost like a uh, repeal off you know you cook the peppers with the onion and everything but my friend Bruce Yo is like uh, you know he wants the peppers at the end so here I, I just want to show him that you know we'll do it the Spanish way and the French way okay we uh, as you can see I switched to red now which which now is probably better pairing because all the smoke and uh, the the saccharat is really working on and uh, Everything is really soaking in and uh, I'm going to taste the rice. I think we're very close and um, it looks to me uh, it's pretty much ready. You know you don't see the white in the middle of the grain and uh, maybe a few minutes more. It's uh, al dente and also I'm working on the, the caramelized the side. So the timing is great uh, everything is wonderful here it smells great and uh, we can wait to taste this with friends we are going to do this paella every Tuesday night this summer starting in May and uh, of course if you have a group at the end and wants to me to cook a paella for your group we gladly do it uh, also, uh, the rosé this summer is going to be a great tasting wine, especially if it's a hot summer. We're going to really emphasize on the rosé and uh, uh, have it nice and cold at the winery. And you enjoy the charcuterie plate and the picnic that we offer here at Lower Creek. Well, thank you very much for watching this video and uh, I hope you can cook a paella. It's not that difficult. Uh, just relax timing and uh, 
timing and temperature it's always the main thing so especially with this dish I look now it's drying up and uh, we're gonna take a picture of it uh, as it's finished um, thank you very much